Atlantis ISS, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event on Space to Ground One? We are ready for the event. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by for the NASA Summer of Innovation questions for students. We go to the Burbank Middle School. Our question is, how do you feel of this being your last launch up to space? Well, thank you for that uh, great question from Burbank Middle School. Uh, you know, uh, it's just a last shuttle launch uh, for us. That doesn't mean we can't uh, fly in space again. There's going to be lots of opportunities. We're still flying folks aboard Russian Soyuz rockets to the space station. And uh, we've got some commercial companies that are building rockets now. So maybe a ride on one of their rockets uh, in the near future. And then NASA's uh, in the process of building a new rocket that will go outside of uh, Earth's orbit perhaps to the moon or Mars. So going to be a lot of great opportunities to uh, fly in space for the foreseeable future. Thanks for the question. Hi, my name is Maurice Coles. I go to Galveston Early College High School. And my question is, are the space suits itchy? Well, thanks, Maurice. Uh, actually, spacesuits aren't itchy. Even the ones when we go out and do a spacewalk, we have a nice, uh, smooth uh, undergarment we wear there, and it uh, it's not itchy at all. And uh, it uh, it also has water tubes in it that can that go up and down and uh, keep you cool because obviously uh, you get a little bit hot when you're out there working real hard. But uh, they're pretty comfortable, and uh, they gotta be because when we go on a spacewalk, we can wear them for about um, six and a half, seven hours for the spacewalk, and then a couple hours getting ready. So it's a long day inside that spacesuit, and you sure, certainly wouldn't want to uh, get itchy. Hi, my name is Reyes, and I'm from Las Cruces, New Mexico, and I was wondering how you guys replace the air that gets lost in the air loss from when you're moving in and out, and that that gets soaked through the cabin walls. Well, Race, that is a very important issue when we do a spacewalk. We don't want to let too much air get outside of the vehicle. So what we do is, uh, before we go out and do a spacewalk, we, uh, we go uh, into a small room called an airlock. And once we get into the airlock, when you're inside our spacesuits, we close the door behind us. And then we let the air just out of that small room. And then once that room, small room is at vacuum, then we can go out a different door, and uh, then we can go out and do our spacewalk. Then, but the, uh, when we do come back in, we uh, do the process in reverse. And then the question is, where do we get the extra air from that we lost? We don't lose too much, but when we do lose a little bit of air, we bring some up with our resupply uh, spacecraft. Thanks, Alexis, and the uh, 2011 RoboCamp. That's a great question. Um, I think, uh, me personally, I would love to go to Mars, but uh, an asteroid or the moon would be very exciting as well because we've, uh, we've done some exploration of the moon, if you remember, way back in the 60s and 70s, but uh, we've got a long way to go there. But uh, if I had a choice, I would love to go to Mars. Thanks for the question. Carlos Gil Hernandez, and, uh, I go to Parker back came here to Helen Morgan. My question is, uh, how many pieces of trash is in space? Well, actually, there's uh, small bits of old rocket parts or satellites and stuff like that, so there are very, very many. There's probably over 1,000. And uh, what, uh, what we do is if a big piece comes toward the space station, we will maneuver the space station, change the orbit a little bit so that the uh, piece of debris won't hit us. Now, there's also little tiny specks, and uh, those we can't really see. So uh, if they hit us, we have shielding on the outside, so it shouldn't do any damage to the space station. What's 
Actually, uh, thanks for that question. NASA will be around for a long time to come. You know, we uh, will finish up the shuttle uh, program uh, here in just a few days, and then uh, we embark on our next adventure, which is going beyond the uh, orbit of the Earth uh, to a Mars or an asteroid or to the moon. Um, so we've got plenty to do. We're going to continue to fly up here on the International Space Station for at least the next 10 years or so. So uh, we'll have crews always up here. Thanks for that question. Hi, my name is Austin Bright at Weiss Middle School in Galveston, Texas. My question is, what kinds of food do you take into space? Well, that's a uh, very good question, Austin. Just so happens that you caught us just before lunch, so we can uh, show you a little bit of what we have here in space. Uh, you can eat lots of different kinds of food. Some of it is dehydrated. For instance, uh, this is actually some spaghetti. And uh, you can also have some stuff that comes in pouches that's kind of just basically ready to eat. So you can have, you can have vanilla pudding, for instance. That's what this is here. Or you can, uh, you can have some of your old favorites, too, like uh, scrambled eggs. And uh, a lot of these require just adding some water. And so you'll see they don't look necessarily like scrambled eggs yet, but uh, they will, and they can be pretty good. Now, the important question is, is how do you know whose food is whose? Well, it's very important we have color codes. So Doug, as the pilot of Atlantis, his color code is yellow. And the commander is red. Now, I see uh, Doug here has got uh, the commander's scrambled eggs, so let's not tell the commander that uh -oh. Doug stole the scrambled <laughs> eggs. So you got to be careful about that. Now, we also got a drink, too, so what we have is these drink bags here. And on these drink bags, they're, just, uh, they're very easy to use. You just pop a straw in there, and then you can drink. So it works out great. This is, for instance, a strawberry drink. You pop a straw in there, and you can sip it, and it tastes great. And uh, the important thing, though, about drinks is if you just float them around with the straw open, then the, the, the uh, drink can float all around and get all over the, all over the walls of the space station. So you've got to be very careful. And they have a, a special valve on the top so you can close them off when, they, uh, uh, when you're not using them. Now, also, of course, we have, some, we have to have some treats, too. So, uh, and uh, I think you guys will recognize these, some uh, candy-coated chocolates. So it's always fun to have a little bit of, uh, little bit of candy also, too. And it's, uh, it's fun to eat, too, because you, uh, you can shoot them at each other. So... So you caught us at the right time, just about, uh, just about lunchtime. Those are the kind of things we eat. Uh, my name is Anthony Tong, and I go to Galveston Center College High School. And I wanted to know if you ever get bored in space. Well, thanks for that uh, question, Maurice. Uh, no, we definitely don't get bored up here uh, on the space station or on the space shuttle. Uh, we've got plenty to do uh, while we're up here during the mission, resupplying the space station or maintaining the uh, space shuttle. And then if uh, we happen to get all our work done, maybe uh, before we go to sleep at night, we, we can take a, uh, take a few minutes to look out the, one of the windows here out of the cupola, which has got several windows. So the last thing you do uh, in space is get bored, that's for sure. Hi, my name is Thomas, and my question is, do you feel heavy when we get back down to Earth? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, Thomas, when we get back to Earth, we do feel heavy. Uh, right now, we're floating in zero gravity, so it's very comfortable. It's uh, kind of like if you've ever had a dream that you can fly. That's just what it's like, and it's so exciting to be able to fly around like Superman here in the space station. It's a lot of fun. Then when you get back to Earth, boy, you pay the price because you feel really, really heavy. But you got to remember if you wake up late at night or something and get out of bed that you're not back on the space station because if you, if, you, if you think you're back on the space station, you'll jump out of bed and try to float to go to another room and you'll end up on the floor. So you feel very, very heavy when you get back to Earth. I'm Renee, and I'm Steven, and we're from Last Street 60, Mexico. Our question is that if you can text or email in space or watch TV, Well, thanks for that question, Renee and Stephen. Uh, we can't really text, but we, uh, we have email, and we're able to send email to our friends and family or coworkers. So we have that, and we, uh, 
we can watch uh, DVDs uh, on uh, some of the laptop computers, but we don't actually have TV up here. So we, we do have a lot of the, the things that you have on Earth, but uh, not all of them. But uh, we don't get a lot of chances to watch uh, much on uh, DVD anyway, and uh, email is just very quick. So uh, thanks for that question. Destiny, I'm from Wise Middle School in Galveston, and my question is, how, how, how do astronauts sleep at night? Well, Destiny, it's, uh, it's very fun to sleep up here at night because, uh, obviously, floating, it's very, very comfortable. But you've got to be careful because if we just fell asleep, we might float and do another module and wake up and not know where we are. So we have uh, sleep restraints. They're kind of like uh, a sleeping bag, and we tie across uh, from one wall to the other. And you can put your sleep restraint across a wall or across the ceiling or across the floor, wherever you want to. So it's, uh, it's very, very comfortable. They're like sleeping bags, except they, they, they zip up so they come around your shoulders so you don't float out uh, at night. My name is Roberto Guzman and go to Burbank Middle School. And my question is, who picks the members of the mission? Well, thanks to Alan, Eduardo, and Roberto for that uh, great question. Um, you know, we were picked uh, by the chief of the astronaut office, Dr. Peggy Whitson, and she's our boss. And uh, obviously, her her choices have to go through several uh, bosses up above her at NASA, but uh, primarily it's our, our boss, the chief of the astronaut office, who picks uh, astronauts for different missions. We are from Burbank Middle School, and our question is, how does it feel to be blasted off in space? Boy, it's amazing. It's like the best roller coaster ride you've ever been on. It's kind of like getting shot out of a cannon. You go from zero to 17,500 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes. And it's an it's a amazing ride. And the view keeps changing because it only takes about a minute or a minute and a half before the blue sky turns to jet black as you start getting into the upper regions of the atmosphere. And then in eight and a half minutes, the engines cut off and everything starts floating. And it's a, it's a spectacular ride. And we really enjoyed our way up here. difference in space? Well, thanks. That's a great question, and uh, it's a bit of a complicated answer. Um, on the space station, they typically use uh, what we call Greenwich Mean Time, which means it's based on the time uh, somewhere in England, and we use that time while we're on space station. But for shuttle missions, we also use what we call mission elapsed time, which means the clock starts at zero when we launch. So right now, we're at uh, eight days, 18 hours, and 53 minutes into the mission of STS-135. And uh, just to complicate things even further, we go around the Earth so fast that every uh, 90 minutes we have an orbit, so we get sunrises and sunsets 16 times a day. So. It kind of gets a little confusing, but that's how we try to manage to maintain time. Thanks for that great question. Hi, my name is Kiana Joseph from Wise ECU. My question is, how why is there no gravity in space? Well, Kiana, it actually just looks like there's no gravity. There is still gravity up here, and if we weren't traveling at orbital speeds, which is 17,500 miles an hour, if we were just took an elevator straight up here to this altitude and got out, we would fall back down to Earth. It's the fact that we're going 17,000 miles an hour that we that we have an orbital orbital curve and we curve around the uh, around the surface of the Earth. So we're actually falling at the same rate that the Earth curves away. So it, it feels, for all intents and purposes, like there's no gravity up here, but there actually is gravity. Hi, my name is Sharon Carol and I go to Weissman School in Galveston, in Galveston, Texas. And my question is, how long do y'all stay up in space? 
Well, thanks. Uh, that's a great question as well. Um, for our mission, we're going to be up here roughly 13 days, um, but uh, it de really depends on the mission. Uh, my last mission, we were here 16 days, and then uh, I'm sure Rex's were very similar, but then the crew members that stay up here on Space Station can stay as long as six or seven months. So uh, we're, we're able to stay in space for a fairly long time, but for the shuttle missions, we typically stay, you know, a couple weeks. I'm Jonathan, and I'm at a SEMA program, and I'm from Las Cruces, and my question is, can you listen to music in space? Well, Jonathan, actually, we can listen to music in space. And as a matter of fact, this morning, for the first time, I used my iPod because uh, I listened to listen to some music. Uh, it, uh, I just was having a little trouble sleeping in, so I decided, well, I'll just listen to some music, and it was wonderful. I had a, a bunch of songs that I had uh, selected to bring with me, and uh, and put the uh, put the headphones on or the earbuds in, and uh, got to listen to my favorite songs before I woke up this morning. Sebastian Biss. And I am Dorothy James. We are with the NASA summer camp at Vanderbilt Dyer Observatory in Nashville, Tennessee. Our camp is our fifth and sixth grade students, and we have a question. How many times have meteors hit the ISS? Hit the ISS? That's a good question, uh, Sebastian and Dorothy. Um, no real large meteors have ever hit the ISS. As Rex said before, uh, we have a, a network of uh, radars and satellites that can track orbital uh, debris and uh, if, if it's something that's large enough we can move the space station uh, in order to miss that but uh, the space station has been hit by what we call micrometeorites before and they're really tiny almost sand sized pieces of meteorites uh, but typically they don't do any uh, significant damage to the space station uh, other than maybe putting a little mark in the surface or Atlantis ISS. This is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Atlantis ISS and NASA Summer of Innovation students. Atlantis ISS, we are now resuming operational audio communications. 